happened in the past couple of days, but still it's 70 degrees and mostly cloudy. The rain has subsided and we're ready for some baseball here at Comerica Park to finish off this homestand against the Cleveland Guardians. Here's their batting order presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Jose Ramirez had a double yesterday. Six of those now in the last 11 games for him. Fran Mil Reyes has a couple of hits in the series. Both are doubles and Owen Miller had a couple of RBIs yesterday for Cleveland in the loss. Michael Pineda takes the bump for the Tigers. Pineda's been really good, especially when he's locating his fastball, throwing that slider. Today going up against a, a very, I think, difficult team to strike out, Chef. They're more of a contact team. He'll have to work the edges. He'll have to change speeds to keep them off balance. He does have solid pitch ability. So we'll see if he's able to navigate through this Guardian lineup today. Yeah, Cleveland strikes out the least amount of any team. Only had two strikeouts yesterday. Here's the defense behind Pineda. Willie Castro, his second start in right field in the series. Javier Baez had yesterday off. He's back in there at shortstop, and Tucker Barnhart catches Pineda for the third time this year. Cody Clemens is over at third base, shaking Mike Sarbaugh's hand, the third base coach for Cleveland. It's his third start at the hot corner this season. I'm anxious to get into that conversation a little bit. You and I had a chance to talk with Cody Clemens about his approach, how it differs at the major league level compared to the minor league level. And I think you can totally relate. So we'll get into that as the broadcast continues. And a very special gesture on the part of the Tigers coaching staff and the players to honor Miguel Cabrera and their way. Wait till you see what they've done for him. That's coming up throughout our broadcast but first things first Stephen Kwan stands in to face Michael Pineda and the first pitch of the afternoon is outside. <laughs> Two and zero to Stephen Kwan who is one for twelve in the series so far but has put together some deep at bats forcing Tigers pitching to go a little bit deeper in that count than they would like. There's the strike that Pineda likes. Yeah the Gardens have done a good job though of making the Tiger pitchers work. It's going to be important for Pineda to establish that he's going to throw strikes today. He's going to force them to swing the bat. Don't want to give up many free passes. Quan sends one in the air to right field. Willie Castro drifting back. He's got it. That's one of the things that the Guardians capitalize on. When they're getting free passes, they utilize their speed, they put pressure on the defense. So again, you want to see Big Mike get very comfortable early. And again, force them, force them to swing the bat. And trust the defense behind you. The defense has been playing pretty well. Especially up the middle with Baez and Scope. Their ability to turn to double play. You saw Terry Francona, his team trying to stay above 500. Coming into play today, just one game over the break even. Tigers have played some clean baseball in this series against the, the Guardians. Putting together good at bats, getting good, some good pitching. We hear that phrase quite a bit, clean baseball. Define it for us. You make the routine plays. You have competitive at bats and you don't give team extra outs. That's clean. And that's how you win baseball games. That's well said. Here's Ahmed Rosario against Michael Pineda. Two for three in his career against Pineda. And he pops this one up on the infield. Scope takes charge. Two away. saw Jonathan Scope in the clubhouse earlier and I said you know what it's great to see you smile. They want to talk about the adjustments that he's made or anything like that. I just said it's it's really fun to watch baseball and see that big smile of yours again and and then it broke out immediately. <laughs> Thanks. It sure has been fun. Usually not very much fun facing this guy if you're an opposing pitcher Jose Ramirez one for three yesterday with the double as we mentioned. Yeah but if you're a baseball fan you enjoy watching this young man play. I do. Yeah. 
And it's not just in the batter's box, it's on the base pass, it's in third base. That's why I like watching baseball games with you. We, and they don't have to wear the English D. Look, we want the Tigers to win, but I like watching good players play. I do too, Chef. But again, I can appreciate the guys that are elite in this game. Yeah. You look up at the board there, you see those numbers. 16 homers, 63 RBIs. That's special in right. itself. Yeah, look, I, I hate the Yankees, but I, I appreciate what Aaron Judge does. I, I like watching him play. Right. I'm not a huge fan of the Yankees. Not a huge I, fan of I the Red Sox, them. but but Bogarts, uh, I like watching Xander Bogarts. You know what I mean? There are certain guys that make you go, okay, you know, what, I'm going to watch this guy's at bat, or I want to watch him play the game. And Jose Ramirez is one of those guys. He's definitely us. one of those guys. You take your kids to the ball game, and you're watching the Guardians and Tigers. Yeah, you're pulling for the Tigers, but you tell your kids, just son, hey, listen, watch that third baseman there. Watch how he plays the game. He plays it. He plays it hard. He plays the game hard. He plays it smart. Those are the, those are the guys you want to model yourself after. And as good at bats like this. Shows patience. Works the count, get himself good pitches to hit. Popped it up. Shallow left center. Clemens out, Grossman in. That's a good start for Michael Pineda. 14 pitches, and he gets the Guardians 1-2-3. Here comes the former Cy Young Award winner Shane Bieber and Riley Green ready to test it. Are your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers? Riley Green has been on base in 15 of his first 16 major league games. Miguel Cabrera had his 247th career three hit plus game yesterday, most among active players. And Tucker Barnhart, after taking yesterday off, is back in the lineup. And on the mound for the for the Cleveland Guardians, which is tough to say, the Guardians is Shane Bieber. Shane Bieber's got a four pitch mix. One of the things he does extremely well is he can spin the baseball. He's got a real good breaking ball, real good slider. Not going to get many mistakes. So if you're the Tigers offense, you want to be short and direct to the baseball and try to capitalize when he does make a mistake to you in that batter's box. It is the third time the Tigers see him this year. Do we weigh much into that? And if so, how much do you think? Well, he's had a lot of success, so you know he comes in pitching with a lot of confidence against this lineup. Feels like he can navigate his way through. But with Riley Green in the lineup now, this is a different lineup. I really feel like his impact and his presence in this lineup has been felt. No doubt. So as you mentioned, the first matchup between Bieber and Green, it's quickly 0-2. Base hit, Riley Green. Come on. On an 0 2 pitch off the best Cleveland has, he delivers yet again. And Jim, you just, you, you can watch this young man, and we've seen enough of him now that his approach is solid. You can see there's no panic in his swing when he gets the two strikes. He trusts what he does in the batter's box. And look how smooth he looks right here. Short, foot gets down. Look at the head and how he stays behind the baseball. I mean, that's a great piece of hitting there on an 0 2 pitch where most young hitters will be. Flying out, flying open, trying to still lift and separate. And he's just one of these guys that said, I know what I have to do. I just need to stay there, stay inside, and stay behind the ball and barrel it up. Softly to Bieber, throws it low. The relay not in time to get by it. Here's the defense behind Shane Bieber. Stephen Kwan making his third start in the series in right field. Jose Ramirez and Ahmed Rosario, a carryover from yesterday's infield starters. Sandy Leon behind the dish. And Ernie Clement makes his first start of the series, his ninth start this season at second base. Here's Robbie Grossman. Decent numbers against Shane Bieber in his career. And riding a 14 game on base streak is Robbie Grossman. Yeah, I was talking to Grossman, some, Grossman about his approach and, you know, what is he trying to do in the batter's box? And what's different this year than last year? And he said in the offseason, he really worked on trying to cover that pitch at the top of the strike zone. And I, and, I, and I really had to ask him, like, 
okay, but your swing path is more of a lunch angle swing. So you kind of can have that you know, upswing, mm -hmm. which keeps him in the zone for a long period of time. I said, why wouldn't you just look down? And he said, well, that's the adjustment that he's made. That gets by Sandy Leon. Javier Baez takes advantage and cruises into second. So the adjustment that we're going to continue to look for throughout the rest of this season from Grossman is, where's his sights? Are they up? They can't be. They have to be down because that works well for his swing path. Well, to your point, the power numbers way down from at this stage a year ago. I feel like, though, when you start, when you hit a couple home runs, they come in bunches. You kind of just get into that groove. But I think it's important to be a good hitter first. Hit, try to establish the line drive swing and then let the power just develop. And his came in back-to-back -back games, his two home runs. One from each side of the plate. He's in a one two hole to Shane Bieber here. And you can see the Guardians playing Grossman the pull here. I wonder if he'll try to utilize the opposite field here with two strikes. Ground ball and nicely gloved by Rosario to get Grossman. Stole away an RBI single. Baez moves up to third with two away. But that's a good swing there. You like Grossman being aggressive. He's still got the ball down, but give Rosario a lot of credit here. He makes an outstanding play here. Diving play and gets up and throws out Grossman at first base. RBI opportunity for an RBI machine in his career, Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, you love the intelligence in which Mickey hits with. Really knows how to set pitchers up. Always hits to the situation. I'm going to show you guys some things today on Mickey and some of the adjustments that he makes throughout this ball game. And if he feels like the guy can speed him up, you might see a different stance. That with, says it all right there, those numbers. So yeah, you know. with runners in scoring position, you'll see him spread out. There's a there's a lot of different things that Mickey do in the batter's box that allows him to continue to be a Ooh. fly ball deep right center field. Drifting over is Stephen Kwan. He backs up. He's got it. The Tigers threaten, fail to score. We head to the second in a scoreless ball game. Was sent down a couple of days ago, and uh, AJ Hinch hated that. He said the vest did not deserve to be sent down. Told him to take a couple of days and clear his head before reporting to Toledo. But in true vest fashion, he jumped on the first plane to Omaha to join the team, but was told to come back to Detroit to take Willie Peralta's spot. So he stayed over at a Best Western in Omaha last night. He says he likes the hotels in the big leagues better, and he's glad he's back, guys. <laughs> well, Shep, I did want to, I mean, yeah, Reyes, Trevor wanted to stop you. Yeah, Reyes sends one deep to right, and it's gone. A solo homer for Fran Mill Reyes to lead off the second, one nothing Cleveland. Shep, he's starting to heat up, though. He had a rough go at it early in the season. Again, chasing pitches out of the strike zone, but we've seen some better at-bats in this series against the Tigers. He's hit the baseball hard to the pull side, and then this pitch here. Up and out over the plate. And when you got power, guys like to get some extension. And that's exactly what Reyes does here. Yeah, that's uh that's big opposite field power too. His seventh of the season. <laughs> the kids are having fun playing the game, ain't they? Now it's Owen Miller standing in. Just three hits in the series for that man, Fran Mil Reyes. All of them extra base hits. A couple of doubles and now the homer. We would remind you Cleveland jumped on Detroit early yesterday as well. They had a one nothing lead after the first inning and then Detroit just exploded. Four in the second, two in the sixth. They ended up winning at 11 to four. I think it's going to be important for them to get to Bieber early. You definitely don't want him to get comfortable. 
Yeah, you said that yesterday against Cal Quantrill. Yeah, both of these guys are guys that, you know, if they get comfortable and they get into their groove, they could be a, a challenge for your lineup. So when you're going up against some of the, like the best pitchers on the staff, the, the ones and the twos, that's the point that you have to make. You have to get to these guys early before they get in that good rhythm. Because a lot of times they'll make mistakes early. And when they settle in, that's when they can be more effective and efficient. That was worth the trip for that Cleveland fan. Let's watch the grab here, though. A lot of distractions there. You got hands flying everywhere. Keeps his <laughs> eyes on the ball. Strike three called. Owen Miller sits down, one away. Nice little two-seamer right there at the bottom of the strike zone. And you can see that ball start down the middle. Catches that inside corner. Painted to get Miller. First strikeout of the day from Michael Pineda. Now he faces Richie Palacios. Wow. Outside 2 0. Velasco is taking some good at bats and some good swings in this series as well. He's not a big guy, but the ball jumps off his bat. Creates some some bat speed. Just 5'10", a buck 80 as he stands in. And it's 3-0. And, oh. and he doesn't get cheated. He takes an aggressive swing. Former Cleveland third-round pick in 2018. Played his college ball at Towson. Now three and one. Lost him. First walk allowed by Michael Pineda since he's been off the IL. Now a message from your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. AZ Plan trading customers can order a 2022 Escape today for $259 a month for 24 months and take delivery in fall 2022. Only at your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. All right, a man on, man out, and a run home for Cleveland here in the second. Here's Ernie Clement. Couple of hits as a pinch hitter yesterday for Ernie Clement. Yeah, Clement hits a lot of ground balls, though. I think this matchup for Pineda works well with that two seam fastball working the bottom of the zone. That's a ground ball waiting to happen. Another young guy in the Cleveland system, Clement, just 26 years young, a former fourth round pick out of the University of Virginia. The 1 0 grounded to second. They'll have to hurry to get two. Baez is relay. Not in time. Just wasn't hit that hard. No, but that's close. But Clement, as you said, he runs well. Yeah. Pineda did exactly what he wanted to do, though. He wanted to get the ground ball, he got it. Scope makes the play, but just not able to turn it because of the speed of Clement. That brings up Sandy Leon. Catcher slash pitcher in the series. This is his second start in the four game set behind the dish. Yesterday he threw two innings of relief. <laughs> That's not something that. A.J. Hinch is in favor of. A.J. Hinch has had to use three position players in a game as a pitcher. Used Harold Castro as a pitcher yesterday. 
He's not a fan of it. But with the way things are in baseball it's nearly required. Everybody has done it. Even though managers don't like it. How do you fix it. It's a good question. It is a good question Jeff and I was thinking about that last night going home I'm like man. What do you do in that situation do you grab. Do you expand the roster there maybe there's a 27 man roster 28 where you don't have those situations happen. Right. We talk a lot about the integrity of the game. Just not sure if. If that's ideal. Well I've been in favor of expanding the rosters for a while. These teams now have eight relievers out of the bullpen when you're playing as many games as baseball does and as many games in a row as perhaps teams like the Tigers are right now 19 games in 17 days. You know, when people start talking about integrity and, and trying to look out for the athletes you got to take a deeper dive. You do. I just got you going a little bit there didn't I. Yeah, I, I just I, you know I, I see it and, and you see these guys and how often they're used and we forget how often they warm up and have to throw those types of pitches the pitches and the throwing that they do prior to games and you're going to limit them to eight relievers I just just don't think it's right. I think it would hurt to have another reliever on your roster that one's pulled foul. And people can debate it all they want that's fine I, I'm open to it I just. I think I don't think it's that hard of a decision quite honestly. I guess I would ask people how does it hurt. Well again what, we what talked you about you not heard anything because listen we talked about nobody pays to come see the pitcher head in the National League so they've changed it and now we have a DH right. in both leagues. Yeah. And no one's coming to watch Sandy Leon or Harold Castro pitch. No. Right. Unless you go back to the seven inning double headers. Here's the two two. Off the end of the bat. Routine for Robbie Grossman. The inning is over for Michael Pineda. Pineda surrenders the solo homer to Fran Mill Reyes. It's one nothing Cleveland. To get hot. And it's a small little adjustment right it's it, it's it's so minute. Rips one to left. And that'll bounce in front of Richie Palacios scope. On Simo's cue, but it's made a, a with huge a difference in his swing. Guys, he started out with the bat knob facing down, and you'll see him here. And when you get to that uh, launch position, you have to flatten that bat out to get it on plane to be able to throw the knob. Well, Jonathan Scope is kind of taking a page out of Aaron Judge books a little bit, to where now he's got the knob facing out a little bit, where he's already created that lag, that angle, and now the hips and the hands are able to work simultaneously. That means working together and getting through the baseball. We've seen his bat stay in the zone for a long time, and he's driving the ball to right field, to center field, and now to left field. Just a good adjustment and good piece of hitting there. So it's as simple. Scope. It's as simple as that, huh? Yeah. How, how does that how does that affect his hands? Because you are you're a big hands guy when it comes. Well, to it hitting. just allows you to really create that angle where, where your bat is already on plane. You're already flattening it out. So if you're hitting standing up like this, you still have to get that bat to, to flatten out to be able to attack the baseball. Well, he simplified that and just already created the angle and now it's saying simply reading the baseball and throwing the knob to it and I get on plane. And that bat stays in the zone for a long period of time. So it's almost as if he's skipping a step to get to the he's step. He's definitely he needs. skipping a step. Anytime that you can simplify your approach, Chef, you're going to be better. You're going to be shorter, more compact, and all of those things work in a swing. What you don't want is to continue to be long with your swing. Lots of swing and misses when you're long. It's good stuff. You use that example with Riley Green all the time. He's a very simple approach. He really does. I, I love talking to Scope in the clubhouse. I said, Scope, I, I noticed something already. He goes, Simo, you don't miss nothing, huh? And I go, well, I just, I, I'm invested in, in what you guys are doing every single day. And I love talking hitting. And I'm like, I, I just see that you're, you're flattening that bat out. And I've noticed it made a world of a difference. And he told me that I was right. So I couldn't wait to bring that to our viewers. Three and one to Willie Castro. Well, it's paid off for Jonathan Scope. Eight for his last 12 in the series. And the numbers starting to climb a little bit. 
Well, this baseball game is a game of adjustments. And you're forever having to fine tune your swing, your approach, your mechanics. How can I be better is always the mindset. Not just the physical aspect, but then, of course, that in turn affects the mental side of the sport. Well, the I'll challenge is you have to believe and trust in that approach as well. There he goes, and it's fouled away. Already has a stolen base in this series. I know he's been showing off some speed, huh? <laughs> well, speed is a relative term, perhaps. It, it is. <laughs> How about his base stealing prowess? <laughs> he got a great jump there, though. He did, yeah. He got a really good jump. I like that A.J. Hinch, though, is being aggressive. You know, putting runners in, put them in motion. Forcing the hitters to put the ball in play. On his way again. Foul tipped out of the glove of Sandy Leon. Now after a while, Chef, you run from first. You're on con you're running on the pitch three or four times. You slow down. All right, here's what the call was with Trip Gibson. He's saying that Leon dropped the ball as he was trying to take it out of his glove to throw out Jonathan Scope. He caught the foul tip. So there's one away. I, I really didn't see that happen. Let's just take a look at it here. No, I, I think Trip Gibson got that one right. It did look like Leon was taking it out of the glove. First out in the inning for Cody Clemens. Clemens rips one and skips off the glove of Ernie Clement. He can't find it. Jonathan Scope's going to score. We are tied at one thanks to Ernie Clemens. Unable to handle the Cody Clemens hot shot. If I tell you one thing about Clemens, he puts the, he puts the barrel of the bat on the baseball, and when he hits it, he hits it hard. Take a look here at this one. He got a pitch in the inside part of the plate. Clemens tries to go down to a knee and, and make a play, but that was hot off the bat of Clemens. 108 off the bat of Cody Clemens. And Ernie Clement couldn't handle it. That's hitting it hard. That brings up Spencer Torkelson. Outside 1 and 0 to Torkelson. Torkelson was talking about facing Bieber and just kind of pushing that ball away and maybe thinking a lot more right center, knowing that he can spin that baseball as well. He'll throw a heavy dose of sliders and curveballs away from him. So his goal today is to stay on the ball. Up high 2 and 0. Swung on and missed. That's the cutter at 86 from Shane Bieber. Yeah, and it just looked like right there, Torkelson changed his sights. He started looking inside there on a 2 0 count. Look, that swing there tells me that he was trying to pull that baseball, get the ball out in front. And Bieber took advantage of him by throwing that 86 mile per hour slider away. Eleventh career start for Shane Bieber against Detroit. He is seven and three in his career against the Tigers, and six and one in this ballpark.
Swung on and missed. Back to back cutters. Back to back swings and misses. It's two and two. Now with two strikes. Truxton will definitely have to back that baseball up a little bit more. Those two swings there in the first two pitches you can tell that he was way out. He's out front. And he's got his sight set a little bit too far out in front. With two strikes guys start to think let it get a little bit deeper. Down he goes. A couple of strikeouts in the inning for Shane Bieber and there are two away. If the Tigers score three or more runs in this game, you can visit a participating Arby's location tomorrow and receive a free small order of curly fries. They have scored at least three in each of the first three against the Guardians so far in the series. And here's Tucker Barnhart. Barnhart took yesterday off on Wednesday went one for three with a double and he walked. Yeah. Couldn't hold up and it's 0 and 2. They play him to pull outside. I'm noticing that Barnhart is really trying to load up and get on his backside, which will allow him to stay back behind the baseball and allow the hands to work out in front. I know that's something that he's been working on down in the batting cage, hitting off the tee and soft toss. There goes Clemens. It's inside and Clemens has a stolen base. Good jump, good slide. Man in scoring position. Yeah, Bieber not paying much attention to him with that high leg kick there gives Cody a chance to to get a good jump and oh, head first slide there. But look how he gets his head down first three steps as he peek in. Nope, he's going right away. He steals that bag easy. First time this year the Tigers have had two stolen bases in an inning. Jonathan Scope earlier and now Cody Clemens. It's a different kind of style of baseball that we're yeah. seeing in this series. Again being really aggressive on the base path. As you alluded to we saw Jonathan Scope who's not a burner by no no stretch. But he was able to steal a bag. Now Cody's taking a bag. Forcing the action. Yeah, Clemens has got such a great attitude when it comes to the game of baseball and how he just locks himself in, focuses so much. Different approach at the plate than what he had in the minors. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the telecast, but he's gonna he's gonna battle you. He's a grinder. And you mean that in the highest compliment. Here's the 2 2. Base hit to center. Clemens is going to be waved home. Straw's throw is up the line. Tigers have the lead on the RBI single. And now Cleveland kicks it around. Barnhart will stay at second. Back to back RBI singles. Clemens with one out. Barnhart with two. And Detroit's in front. Yeah, that was set up there by Clemens. Still in that bag off Bieber. Bieber gave him a high leg kick. Taking a long time to deliver the baseball and gets in the scoring position. And then how about Tucker Barnhart, who's been searching for his swing? But he might have found something here. Loaded up well, stayed back, got the head out in front. And he hammered that ball up the middle. Take a look at the swing here, but I want you to focus on the backside. You see how he flexed that back leg? He gets to that power position, hits against the firm front side. That's something that he's going to continue to work on, something that he must do. 
to get back to being the hitter that he feels like he can be. That skips in against Riley Green who singled his first time on. Ramon Santiago very aggressive in that third base coaching box fully aware that Miles Straw the center fielder for Cleveland leads the league in assists. Good arm usually very accurate he has thrown out nine runners this year but not Cody Clemens two one Tigers. Straw plays way in too, ship I think that's part of the reason why he's thrown out so many guys. A bouncer to first. An easy play for Owen Miller and the inning is over but the Tigers score a couple of times thanks to an RBI single from Cody Clemens and another from Tucker Barnhart just like that the Tigers are in front. From Cody Clemens one from Tucker Barnhart Miles Straw leads off the third for Cleveland against Michael Pineda. Be nice to see Pineda put up a zero here and get the boys back in the dugout mm -hmm. and keep this offense rolling. Yeah, the last thing you want to do if you're a pitcher, right, is give the lead right back or let them tie it. Starts Miles Straw off with a strike. Jeff, I believe in momentum. And the boys and that Tiger dugout has some going right now, and they've had it going in this series. Want to keep it going. That's inside, one and one. You feel it too, don't you? I you mean, do. You feel a, sh a shift almost. You definitely feel a shift. It seems like everybody in that dugout, everybody in the lineup is just raising their level of play. Straw in the air to right. Willie Castro over near the stands doesn't have room. Ground ball to short. Baez. Smoothly done. One away. Tigers players and coaches wanted to do something special for Miguel Cabrera to celebrate his 3,000th hit. They didn't want to get clogged up with a lot of presentation. But what they did, and it was really A.J. Hinch who spearheaded it, they hired Opie Otterstadt, a painter and creator, who was first contacted when the Tigers were in Houston earlier this year. And he painted a Miguel Cabrera bat that is Miguel Cabrera's that's a game used bat by Cabrera that A.J. Hinch kind of snuck off and the other players in Major League history who have 3000 hits each of those faces are painted on the bat. It took Otterstad three hours to paint each face so over a hundred hours on just that section of that beautiful mural for Miguel Cabrera. And Otterstadt's done it before. He did it for pool holes. He did it for Biggio. And they're 3,000 heads. But what he did is he drew up a mock of what he envisioned and showed it to A.J. Hinch and some of the players, and they loved it, right? So they all chipped in and then presented it to Miguel Cabrera before the game against Kansas City on Saturday. He was moved. He was surprised. He was touched. A.J. Hinch called everybody in and said I want to go over all star travel with you guys where you're going to be and where we're going to go and then he recognized some of the all stars Javier Baez Joe Jimenez and left Cabrera for last and said by the way just want to show you something that we've all chipped in to get you to celebrate such a magical moment in your career Cabrera again emotional surprised obviously very happy but also said this is the last time we're going to talk about it. We're going <laughs> yeah. to move on and we're going to start winning baseball games in typical Miguel Cabrera fashion. You're absolutely right, Chef. That's all he cares about is winning. But I did get a chance to to slide into the clubhouse today and ask him about that and how much it meant to him. And you know, in Miggy fashion, he goes, "These guys, these guys, they get me emotional, Moro. <laughs> 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 they almost made me cry." <laughs> What I like most about it is the fact that it comes from the players and the coaches themselves. Yes. It didn't get wrapped up in a huge unveiling and presentation on the field. They did it in their house, in the clubhouse. And it's a little separate from an organizational type thing, which to him 
probably means a little bit more. There's no question it does. Okay. Coming from your teammates and your coaches, the guys that are with you every single day, grinding with you every single day, there's a special bond when you're inside that clubhouse and you go to battle with your teammates and your brothers every single day. For them to do something so special, there's no question it's touching. And you talk to the players about how they felt and how much pride they had and how much they appreciate not just Cabrera but then what he said it's time to move on I appreciate it but let's go win some ball games. It meant an awful lot to them. They were blown away when they saw the mock but when they saw the completed project it left a lot of them speechless. And those pictures that we showed you of them in the clubhouse as a team that, that tells you about that brotherhood doesn't it. It, it does. And having a chance to be a part of a brotherhood as such a lot of times you'll forget your teammates as far as their numbers and what they did but you wouldn't you don't you never forget the camaraderie that you had and the brotherhood that you had inside that clubhouse. Well it's the one thing you miss probably more than anything else about the game. Yes. Right. Is, is the clubhouse banter and the opportunities to be so close with guys you truly love and are part of your family. Yeah that, that's what you miss. You, you, you love the game. But you miss your boys. You miss being in the clubhouse, being on the field, taking batting practice, uh, traveling with them, going to dinner. I mean, we do so much together that you create such a bond that is unbreakable. And you can see, you, I may not, like, there's a lot of guys that I haven't seen in a long time. But as soon as we meet back up, it's like we never missed a beat. It was, it's like we've been together all this time. It's, I, I can't really explain. It's just different, Shep. It's just different. Yeah I feel it. There's no doubt about it. Very unique. Ahmad Rosario fouls it away. It's one and two to the number two hitter in the Cleveland lineup. And by the way nobody else really has access to that that portrait that painting that mural whatever you want to use to describe it. So Miguel Cabrera allowing us to to shoot it as much appreciated and, and tell the story and you know A.J. Hinch doesn't doesn't want that type of credit it goes to really everybody associated with it but A.J. Hinch has the relationship with Otterstad from his days in Houston. There's one up the middle. Baez will take it himself. You bet. A double play turned by Javier Baez. It helps to have a cannon doesn't it. That's the way to end the inning. 2 1 Tiger. In hits, 77 hits so far. And those RBI totals just keep climbing as well. So, along with those 3,000 hits and 500 home runs, he's making a case to be a legit All Star this year. What are your thoughts on that one, guys? Well, I feel like the way he swung the bat this season at age 39, I mean, he is, he's, been, he's been the Tigers' best hitter all season long. So, there's no question he there deserves an opportunity. To go to the Miss Summer Classic, Trev, but I will say this, as well as the bullpen has pitched, you know, guys like Fulmer and Lang, those guys' names are going to be circling the baseball as well. So, Shep, I, what do you think? Well, I would say this. I mean, he, he look, he, he's got 77 hits on the season. That's top 20 in the American League. So, I mean, he's got more than Luis Robert. He's got more than Shohei Otani. He's got more than Randy Rosarena, Whit Merrifield. Alex Verdugo guys like that we make a lot of those I mean Marcus Simeon saying that huge deal in Texas he's got more than he does we could go on and on I, I think he has proven now he, the, the power is not there we understand that but he has proven that you know he can hit he could still hit and there's something to be said for that um, uh, you know Luis Arise is a really good hitter he has second most hits in the American League really good hitter for Minnesota. You think he's an all star. I, I do. I think he's an all star. I wouldn't want to face him in a clutch situation. And that's the same thing with Miguel Cabrera. We showed you the numbers earlier. He's betting 455 with two outs and runners in scoring position. You don't fake those numbers. No. No you earn those numbers. Yeah. After the strikeout of Baez it's one and one to Grossman inside.
They play Grossman to pull. Here's the 2 1. Fouled away. Grossman's starting to look more like himself or what we saw last year. Chef, when you start to look at his mechanics, I thought early in the season he was not lifting his leg up high at all. He was trying to keep it low so he could be shorter and more compact to the baseball. But that wasn't working for him. He said he never really got comfortable. And now he's just, he, he went back to doing what he's always done. And that's it with a high leg kick, which gets him back in that power position to be able to read and react to the baseball. He strikes out back to back punch outs for Shane Bieber to start the third two away. Because we've been talking a lot about Miguel Cabrera. Should he be in the all star team? But here's what I want you guys to pay close attention to for this year. Here's how Mickey has been getting it done. Here's this square stand. That means his feet are parallel. And he's staying square to the plate. But when he feels like the guy's going to try to come inside on him, you see there he's open. This is called his open stance, where that front foot is slightly open from his back foot. And now with two strikes, or a guy that ball gets on him a little bit quicker, he no strides. He keeps the front foot down, and he utilizes the hand, and he's worked this approach to perfection this season. How many guys do that? Not many guys hit with Mickey's intelligence in the batter's box. The way he makes adjustments from different pitchers from pitch to pitch has been uh, remarkable. Two and oh to him. I'm not sure that is highlighted nearly enough. We, we talk about the home run power and the triple crown from earlier and the two MVPs and the number of hits and home runs but his baseball IQ as a hitter. Well the just the, the smarts and the adjustment that he makes again. We, I've talked to him several times about how he even sets up pitchers. You might see him take a, a bad swing on a breaking ball on the first pitch. And, you know, the pitcher's thinking, wow, I got him. Yeah. And then they come back with that pitch with two strikes, and he whistles that ball to right center field. That's how he thinks the game. And he's doing it against the best in the world. I mean, I couldn't do that in Pony League for crying <laughs> out loud. It's amazing. Once ahead, 2-0 oh in the count. Now it's even 2-2. Two and two. And let's see here if he goes to the no stride with two strikes here. A lot of times you'll see him spread out. In the hole, Rosario takes his time. The Tigers are retired in order for the first time today. The shift is on against Ramirez. And the first pitch is upstairs. Flew out to left his first time up. The Tigers have done a really good job against Ramirez. They hadn't let him get loose here in this series. They've been doing an excellent job of keeping him off balance. He is the key to Cleveland. That is not breaking news by any stretch. In the victories for Cleveland this year, his batting average. Well over 330. Well, they've slowed him down a lot. Changing some speeds. You've seen them work the both sides of the plate, elevating their fastballs, just kind of giving him a different look every time he comes to the batter's box. And he hasn't really taken comfortable swings. Turns on one, sends it to right. Willie Castro measures it and then backpedaling his way into the acrobatic catch. That was a testy one right there. Yeah, that it? was testy. And it, it, I'm sure Castro read the swing there. But when you think about Ramirez's approach, he is creating backspin with his swing. And that ball had some backswing spin on it, and it just kept carrying. Castro did a good job of just showing off his athleticism and just getting back there and making the play after he didn't read it perfectly. Fran Mill Reyes with a bullet to right. And Castro makes a nice catch before crashing into the wall. We well, read that one absolutely perfect. Takes a really good route to this baseball, knows that he's got to get back. 
jumps up and makes a grab. Man, has he grown on the defensive side as an outfielder. It's interesting you talk about reading swings. So as an outfielder yourself, you're reading swings or you're reading the flight of the ball. How are you judging and balancing all the things you, you need to do? Well, I'm reading swings because that's going to give me tell me the direction and where, where the ball's going. And then I am going to read the trajectory of the ball. I know if it's a line drive right at me, I'm going to have to come in. And if that ball starts at my, like say, on the old English D on my baseball cap, I know that I'm probably going to have to get back. So it's it's a it's a dance kind of thing when you're out in the outfield. Everybody thinks playing the outfield is easy. It's one of the toughest positions to play too because the ball does so much. Sometimes it knuckles. Sometimes the hitter hits the baseball. They give you top spin where the ball's diving down, and then they create this backspin where the ball carries. So you really just want to freeze. You and, and realize what is what the ball's going to do and then make the necessary adjustment. Sometimes it's slicing away from you. It definitely slices away. Left hander hits the ball, especially out to left field. That ball's going to run towards the left field line. Right hander hits it, stays inside of it. It's going to run to the right field line. Three and one now to Owen Miller. In addition to the elements, wind, wind rain, rain, depending on whether yeah. it's cold or warm. It's a lot of factors, aren't there? Yeah, sure. But when you just focus on getting behind the baseball every single time, you always put yourself in a good position to make a play. Torkelson can't quite make a play on that foul ball, just out of his reach. Three and two. It looked like Torque wanted to go in the dugout and catch this ball. It's not a lot of help over there in the Cleveland dugout, right? None. Nobody got up. Pineda has fought back in the count. He struck Miller out in the second looking. And now after being down 3 0 in the count has it full. Down the left field line but curving foul. It's a fascinating conversation about outfielders in addition to all the elements then you could shift gears and go from an outdoor stadium to, to an, an indoor, indoor stadium. Start thinking about places like Tropicana Field. I played in the old Metrodome and oh was that the worst place oh, yeah. to play. Yeah, that was <laughs> that was a garbage camp. Oh. Up the middle Baez spins his way. And pulls Torkelson off the bag. Tough play, and Miller is aboard with two down in the fourth. It's more than just a seat, it's a summer of fun. Tigers baseball exclusive events and great memories. Secure your seat for the 2023 season and make your deposit today starting at just 50 bucks per seat. Go to tigers.com slash membership today. Inning is alive for Richie Palacios. A little low one and oh to Palacios who walked in the second. There's the strike at the bottom of the zone, one and one. But that has been really keeping the baseball down. They could use some length out of Michael Pineda here today. Yeah, Knowing that they go to Chicago and Kansas City, that includes a doubleheader in Cleveland. Yeah, if he can keep locating that, keeping that ball down and, and not missing 
pitches over the plate. I feel like Shep, he's going to be in good shape. He's got a good, he's got the slider working today. Cutter. He's throwing some good change up to the left handers. Well, ahead in the count one and two to left fielder Richie Palacios. Little cat and mouse between Palacios and Pineda. Palacio stepped out and then Pineda stepped off. Reaches out to center field. Riley Green is there and the inning is over. 2 1 Tigers We're getting ready for the bottom of the fourth. It'll be Scope, Willie Castro, and Cody Clements. Chubb that he's hitting with good rhythm, good timing. He's recognizing pitch location early enough to where he's taking the right swings. And he's hitting the ball where it's pitched. Singleton scored to lead off the second in his first at bat against Shane Beaver. Menards bringing you the big money encounter. This is how much of a money player he has been in this series. Look at the on base plus slugging. It's crazy. That is one, crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. It included a four hit game in the first game of the series of the doubleheader. His seventh such game of his career. Jammed him a little bit. A looper to left center and it's going to be caught by Palacios. Palacios and Miles Straw converging on that one. The left fielder wins out, one away. Yeah, Scope will tell you there, he let that ball get a little bit too deep. That happens, Chef, when you're starting to see the ball really well and you're starting to trust that swing in the batter's box. You feel like you can't do any wrong. Bieber might have got away with one there. It does show you how vital he is to the offense. Oh, yeah. Brings up Willie Castro, who struck out swinging in the second. He was the first of four strikeout victims for Shane Bieber so far today. Fouled away. Yeah, Bieber's throwing Castro a lot of off-speed pitches, a lot of breaking balls. He's also cutting that ball in and trying to get it underneath the hands of Castro. Bieber works quickly. You know all about his accolades and for good reason. But he was a Cleveland fourth round pick in 2016 out of Cal Santa Barbara. In the air. Down the left field line Palacios lost his cap but kept the baseball in his sights to retire Willie Castro. Cody Clemens with a rocket off the bat. Of course, his father referred to as Roger Rocket Clemens. Well, Cody Clemens is paving his own path. An RBI single, a stolen base, and then he scores a run on the Tucker Barnhart single to center. He has been an impact player for Detroit, and he is a gamer. He's definitely a gamer. He's also showing his versatility, playing first base, playing second base. He can play third base. He's played the outfield. <laughs> He's played it all. Head. He's played it all. I, I, I was at his stall yesterday talking to him while he was oiling each of his gloves. It was taking a while. But we had time to kill. So why not. Right. <laughs> right. And he talks about the super discipline that you have to have at this level. Because you know in the major leagues you're going to get maybe one or two pitches in an at bat. That's not how he felt in the minor leagues. So it's a different approach from the minor leagues to the major leagues. It definitely is. Again, he's absolutely right, too. You, 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 there's a good chance you get two, three pitches to hit in the minor league, especially in the lower levels. The guys, not really, they don't have the best command. As you get to this level, there's at bats where you don't get a pitch to hit and you're walking back to the dugout. But then, when, and then I will say this there's most of the time you're getting one pitch 
over the plate that you can handle. And you got to be prepared for it, and you better not miss it. That's bounced in there, two and two. He also told me, look, I'm not trying to hit home runs. You try to impress in the minor league level. And look, there is a point in time when in the minor leagues you're like, ah, when am I going to get to the show? I want to face X guy, right? I want to face Shane Bieber, right? Instead of facing some minor league pitchers. Right. So the focus might be a little bit more intense here. That might help him. Well, I, I think it is more intense here. A chopper back to Beaver. One, two, three, go the Tigers in the fourth, but they lead it by a run on Valley Sports in Detroit. The edges on both sides of the plate, and again, he has changed speeds well to keep them kind of out on that front foot, and then he kind of speed them up with that 90 mile power fastball, having these guys kind of in the defense mode a little bit. Uh, in their swings. Yeah, he, he hasn't had the highest of strike percentage as we're normally used to, but he's thrown just enough of that off speed pitch just to keep him off of the fastball. But I like that little cutter that he's throwing that that I don't remember him throwing a whole heck of a lot. But that's hey, if the, the change up isn't there and the slider isn't there as many strikes and located in it as well. He's got that little cutter now to keep him off the barrel. He's facing the bottom third of the Cleveland order and Ernie Clement leads off the fifth with a single. Third hit of the day for Cleveland. They He's need also they, located the ball well too. Yeah, I, the I was, fastball. Yes. The fastball is really located. I was well. going to say they need some innings out of him though, they considering do. the number yeah. of uh, games they've got in a row here and what happened, you know, yesterday. Yep, and, and they do, and that was what a sixty, okay, sixty seventh pitch. And he threw 65 his last outing. So you've got to believe that he can get into 80, 85, I would think. And that should put him, hopefully, if he has a good inning here, through the sixth inning. Facing Sandy Leon, swings and misses. And when we refer to yesterday, Willie Peralta on the 15 day IL, as Trevor Thompson told you earlier in our broadcast. And Alex Fayeto hurt his hip a couple of days ago, although he feels like he's going to be all right. I actually told A.J. Hinch earlier today, I feel great. And he will be on the taxi squad for Detroit when they hit the road later today. And he still has a few more days because I think they're looking at him for the doubleheader on Monday in Kansas City. Right. So you still got four good days and you get to get to throw at least one side session in the bullpen just to test things and make sure you're OK. Guys, we've seen so many pitchers. Get hurt this season. It's amazing. Isn't it? It, it truly is. But yet. The Tigers have shown how much depth they have in the organization now where we've calling these rookies up guys that are getting a chance to make their major league debuts which they weren't expected to make the big league club or even pitch maybe this year in the big leagues. But you feel good about guys like Bo Brisky when he takes the mound. You feel good about Alex Fiedo giving your team a chance to win when he takes the mound. We've seen these rookies come up and, and again compete make adjustments and keep your team in the in the game long enough to see if your offense can get going. Well, I'm glad you brought it up because A.J. Hinch said before the game you, you go into a season you think you need about eight to ten maybe maybe eleven starters. The Tigers have used 14 most in majors and it, it does show you the value of the depth the organization has been built in that regard. I mean, how about Gary Hill coming up six innings two hits. I think he only gave up one run. Yeah, he just gave up the one home run. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's with the all important draft coming up here in the next couple of weeks. You know, that's the thing that you have to restock. You can't just take a group and say, when that group comes up to the major league level, yeah, we're going to be in good shape. And then you get a bunch of injuries, and then wait a minute, who's the next wave that's going to replace them? And that's exactly what the Tigers have done that, hey, they had that good group, you know, the Scoobles, the Mize, and Mannings, but two of them aren't here. You know, but they've been able to replace him. That's a base hit to right for Sandy Leone. Back to back singles for Cleveland to start the fifth. The reason the Tigers have been forced to use 14 starters is because of the injuries. And you see all the different names who have started a game so far for Detroit this season. Joey Wentz came back in his first out and scuffled a little bit, but then he bounced back in his next opportunity. He dealt. Elvin Rodriguez was, wasn't bad at all either when he got a chance. We were all down in Lakeland, and when they broke 
camp. Your thought was it's Mize, it's Scooble, it's Eduardo Rodriguez, it's Michael Pineda, it's Matt Manning. And Tyler Alexander, right in that. As a fifth guy. Yeah, right. well, he's exactly. your Swiss yeah. Army knife. He, I mean, you can right. put him in at any time. But he was in that. He, he was, was in, that, in, the in that five role. But then you look at it, Scooble's the only one who's made all the starts. Yeah. So far. Just goes to show you again, you talk about depth, you talk about guys getting an opportunity and taking advantage of it. Well, and they're probably still feeling the effects of 2020. You know, and, sure. and and also a shortened spring, things like that. You talked about it earlier about protecting assets. This could be two. Baez turns the double play. Thought about going to third. Clement had a nice jump, but that's exactly what Michael Pineda needed. Two away with a man at third. I really thought Baez was gonna <laughs> was gonna throw that ball to third place to Clemens and get Clement. But I think he makes the what well, he does. He makes the right decision here, taking the double play. And that could have <laughs> I don't know. Who, as a pitcher, do you do you want him to get that lead runner? Or do you, you want to give you, you, you want, want that, that double, double play, play right? <laughs> That's what <laughs> you, I'm thinking. You want that double play, and I think it's it, it might have been a little risky to see if they can get it to third and then all the way across the diamond. You know, you still got a runner on second scoring position, but take that sure, sure two. And that's the second one he's turned just like that with the unassisted uh Move it second and then throwing over to first. Still surprised he got straw. I mean, that ball was hit hard, though, and that's why, because straw runs well down the line. Alex Lang is up and throwing for Detroit. It's a big one right here for Michael Pineda against the leadoff man, Stephen Kwan. Outside, one and one. Well, you know what Quan's trying to do here. He's just trying to flick that ball into to short left field. Seems like one of those guys that just lets the ball get really deep, really tries to work his hands inside of it. And I was looking at that last pitch just up and away, trying to get that so we can get that lazy fly ball out to left field. Not something down in that strike zone. Now the Tigers have had some success against Corns crowd him with fastballs on the inner half. One for 13 in the series, Stephen Kwan. Fouled away, counts even. Tucker Barnard after that last pitch kind of nodding his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah, but take a look at the outfielders. Our green deep in center. Castro kind of deep in right. See how Grossman's kind of creeping in a little he bit. He is. He's creeping oh, in yeah. a little bit because he knows what Quan likes to do. He's going to try to take that little short base hit to left yeah. away from him. Oh, That's inside the bag down the left field line. Quan will dig for second. The throw is late. It's an RBI double for Stephen Quan to tie it. Not a bad pitch, Jared. Pineda had worked the bottom of the strike zone. He goes up that upper part of the strike zone. But look at Quan gets the hands. I call that barrel above the baseball and hits a line drive down the left field line, just past the third base. Well, you know he's tough to strike out, and I think that ball just caught a little bit too much of the plate. You know, it was down the middle a little bit more. If that ball's out over the outside part of the plate, that it could have been different. Plus, it's right down the line. It could have been a ground ball right at Cody Clemens, but just fortunately, unfortunately, right down the line. Now Pineda has to refocus and get Ahmed Rosario. And partner, I didn't think there was no way Quan was going to be able to get on top of that baseball. No. <laughs> The ball was almost at his neck, it looked like to me. Fouled away, it's one and one. 
Chef, we are starting to see the Guardians making some adjustments against Pineda, though. Again, they've been making him work, but they're they're fouling off some good pitches and getting better pitches to hit. And that pitch count sliding up to 81, and you know that the dugout down there on the Tigers' side is seeing the same thing. Hey, they're having better at bats, plus, plus that pitch count starting to slide up. That's why Alex Lang is up in the bullpen. Now one and two. Looks like Alex Lang is ready. Yeah, I don't think they take a whole heck of a lot of time down there. They're doing their bands and staying loose. And when they get up, it only takes them just a couple of throws to, okay, go ahead, catcher, get down. They throw a couple fastballs, they spin a couple, and then they know just to get right in as close as you can to being ready when you still have eight pitches out when you get into warm up before you go into the game. Strike three. Rosario sits down. The second strikeout of the day from Michael Pineda, but Cleveland on three hits gets the equalizer to tie to two. To our partner and our friend Dan Petrie and his career. And so excited for Lou Whitaker because it is so well deserved. That's going to be a fun ceremony. Just everybody that's going to come back and. You'll be there? Um, I, I will be there. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm working that day. Torkelson lines one left center field. That's down, and he's aboard to kickstart the fifth. Now it's time for Chevrolet's strongest player, Tucker Barnhart, delivering last time up, Simo. Yeah, he's making some adjustments here, guys, and I want to highlight a couple of them. Take a look at that, that backside there. This is getting in a good low position. He wanted a little flex in that in his in his load up, and so he gets that there. Then I want you guys to focus on him getting to that power position where the front foot gets down and the hand start to, to come towards the baseball. So you're going to see him transfer his weight to hit against the firm front side there. But here about, how about right there? That's the power position. Palm up, palm down, stand behind the baseball. That's why the ball's jumping off his bat. This is something that he want to continue to work on in the batting cage, and hopefully he keeps taking it into the game and having some success. Tell you the other thing I like about it is RBI single, and then you got Eric Haas doing what he's doing behind the plate. You don't care who's behind the plate. You, when you got that much offense okay, and, you're, yeah. and, and you're catching a good game, C catches has to be tough because their number one job is to call a great game and, and take care of the pitchers. They don't have a lot of time to focus on their hitting. And if I were a catcher, yeah, that's that's important. But doggone it, I mean, it feels good to get some hits. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. Hey, how'd you do? Every all your buddies, how'd you do today? Oh well, I, well, I caught a win. <laughs> I went over four with three strikeouts. You know, I mean. Well, if you ask AJ Hinch, he'll tell oh, you. Yeah. Well, you got your number one <laughs> job is to call a W. Oh, I love it. Swing and a miss. It's two and one. Spoken like a true catcher, right? And it, as you saw by that note, it had been a while since Barnhart felt that type of sting off the bat. Well, he told me he was watching some videos and he noticed that he didn't have that connection where his upper, upper body and lower body just wasn't working together. So he went back and looked at the days of Cincinnati when he was, he felt like he was driving the baseball. He goes, oh, I see something. Am I getting loaded up? You know, I think you guys had the uh, the discussion about whether you thought the, you know, switch hitting had had caused any issues, and I think t if Tucker Barnhart felt that way, he would have said, "Okay, forget it. I I, I tried right-handed. I'm going back to just strictly left-handed." So I, I don't think he believes it, that that it's caused any trouble. Well, just a couple of days ago, Pete, he hit a double from the right side off a lefty, and he said it. He goes, "Aha." I was I, I really felt like I got loaded up. And I'm not doing that on the left side. Had a good eye in that plate appearance draws a walk first two men aboard for Detroit and they turn the line up over to Riley Green. Dan how would you pitch to Riley Green. You know last night when we were up here he right now he's one of those guys that it, it's like I don't have a really good crystal clear idea about how one 
how to go after him. My initial thought is to throw him inside. And also, I've seen him swing and miss at some change-ups inside. So it's setting up the fastball inside and then changing up right off that fastball in the inside part of the plate. Usually you try to go to that change up the other way, but he goes to left field so well. So it's just I and that's what makes him so tough right now is I don't know that pitchers have a real good clear idea about how to attack him. Well, there's a lot to like about him. You're impressed with a lot of things that he does, but even when he's in these situations, oh two, remember his base hit in the first came with two strikes. Yeah. Out. Trying to dig out of an O2 hole here. But he went three pitches down he goes. That's the first out in the Tigers fifth. Yeah they were really spun the baseball against him that time. It looked like it was tough for him to pick up. And yeah it looked like he went a little bit too far there. Huh, Dan? Yeah I think so. Five strikeouts for Shane Bieber so far today including one of Javier Baez back in the third. Now that's the thing you get him rolling a little bit and he's starting to feel a little bit more comfortable about spinning the baseball. That's why this is yeah kind of a key. The first two guys get on you want to capitalize on this because the more comfortable he gets out there spinning that baseball. We know how good he is doing that. You don't want to get him feeling too good. Base hit right side for Javier Baez. They're going to wave home Torkelson. He will score without a throw and Baez gives the Tigers the lead. But I just felt like right there, Bias shortened up against Bieber. You know, used to taking that big swing, that ball 92 right down the middle. Two seam variety comes right back over the plate. Some more under control swing there from Javier Baez. Yeah, I like the fact that he goes the other way. I question Bieber's pitch selection right there. You know, after striking out. Uh, Riley Green with three particular three good breaking pitches and then you throw a fastball right down the heart right down the middle to Javi Baez. A little surprised he didn't spin him. A little you bit. Little sliders down the way he's had a difficult time and the cutter His laying off that pitch good. but capitalizing on the mistake over the heart of the plate driving in another Tiger run. The opinions expressed by Dan Petrie. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 Michael Pineda likes it. We know that. Robbie Grossman looking for more. Grounded to short in the first. Really nice play by Ahmed Rosario to steal away an RBI single, and then he struck out. Here's a chopper to first, make it to second. Miller started toward it and then quickly ran to the bag, giving it to Ernie Clement. Two away, but both runners move up for Miguel Cabrera. Slide out to right, grounded out to short. I think he's been really good in, with runners in score because he hit a 375 clip. Really been utilizing the middle part of the diamond. A lot of base hits up the middle during that stretch. Good stop by Leon, 1 0. There's that first pitch right there. You know, Miggy's going to be patient too. Miggy's been around a long time and knows what a pitcher's going to try to do. Him. He knows there's a base open, but Jonathan Scope being smoking hot in the on deck circle, you know, it's not a given, but you're not going to just throw Miguel Cabrera a cookie. And that, that's what Shane Bieber tried to do right there just get him to chase right off the plate. Inside 2 and 0. Well, Miggy has been hitting the fastball well. Yeah. And he's been hitting it hard. So I'm not surprised here that B 
Beers opted to go to the off-speed pitches. And even in a 2-0 count here, he won't give in to Miguel Cabrera. He'll still throw him a breaking ball or that cutter. The cutter, yeah. Right side, base hit. Over the glove of Ernie Clement. One run is home. Here comes Baez. Head first slide gets him there. A two-run single for Miguel Cabrera. The Tigers extend their lead here in the fifth. And guys, that's why Miguel Cabrera is so good there. He knows he's not going to get a fastball in a 2-0 count, a good hitter's count. He gets a hanging breaking ball, a get me over breaking ball at 84 miles per hour. And that classic Miguel Cabrera swing stays inside in the big fella. Drives in two big runs. RBI machine. That swing is just so geared to do right there. And Shane Bieber, after that play, was kind of pounding like, my bad, my bad. I don't know if he was talking about the pitch, 2-0, and oh, you know, it was a slider, but right down the middle, or the fact that he didn't back up home and allowed Miguel Cabrera to get down to second base. Yeah, it could have been a little bit of both. Yeah. Because he's yep. supposed to be back there. But, man, Miggy is putting on a hidden clinic. The way he's swinging the bat right now. Hitting the fastballs up the middle to right center. Then he sits back. Smart enough to recognize that Bieber's not going to give in to him and throw him a fastball, right. a cookie down the middle. He's looking for that breaking ball, and he didn't miss it. There's one of those lessons for, for young pitchers, though, is that you're you're really upset with yourself giving up that base hit, you know, and, and but you've got to still go. Oh, still oh. got to go back up the bag. Well, good stuff, Dan. As always, we appreciate it. Big inning for the Tigers. They score three. The lead is three on Valley Sports as we head to the sixth. And Alex Lang is in. In a wall side windows pitching change. And for the second time in three days. You always feel comfortable when Alex Lang comes out of that bullpen. Because what he's been able to do, he's been very effective and efficient. Here's 39 punch outs. You see there in 30. 30.1 third innings. He's got a good fastball. He surprises me though by throwing right handers and left handers a 90 mile per hour changeup. And he's got a wicked knee buckling breaking ball. He is in because Jose Ramirez is leading off here in the sixth. And then friend Mil Reyes and Owen Miller for Cleveland. We've seen this matchup here before. Lane got the better of Ramirez. Threw him some really good breaking balls. Let's see how he chooses to attack Ramirez in this at bat. Alex Lang warmed up today's game by having a very intense game of ping pong against Tyler Alexander. <laughs> he did. Yeah, it was. They were playing it almost like tennis. Ramirez pops it up. Barnhart giving chase. There's room and he puts him away. Now he faces Fran Mill Reyes. Our best coverage in the game. You check out the T-Mobile coverage cam. It's Fran Mill Reyes leading off the second. Smoked it to right field. 381 feet. Left the bat at over 105 miles an hour. And it was his seventh home run of the season to give Cleveland the early lead. Yeah, Pineda just left that ball up. Reyes jumped all over. First pitch is low. One of the many things we enjoy doing as we get ready for our broadcast is visiting with opposing media. And our friends from Cleveland on Valley Sports Ohio raving about Alex Lang the other day, and for good reason. When we talk about the strengths of teams and you get the quote unquote media scouting report, immediately my partner Craig Monroe turns his attention to the bullpen. And Alex Lang's name is mentioned more frequently than others. Two and one. Yeah, he's just got a dominant pitch arsenal for me. He got a hard fastball that gets up to 97 miles per hour. We talked about that change up that's 90 miles per hour. And then that wicked breaking ball right there. That is nasty right there. That's the yeah. curveball at 85, almost unfair to Reyes two and two. And Lang has so many options here. What he can do with behind it, ahead in the county can go elevated fastball. He can just go to that breaking ball. 
just missed. Boy, my partner had him rung up. Man, how did he even lay off that pitch? Take a look at the location there. Just missed the outside. See ya. Two away. So that's got some bite. And you have to cover 97. And then out of his hand, that's coming out hot, looking like a fastball. And all of a sudden, the bottom falls out when it gets to the pitting zone. Tough pitch to lay off of and a tough pitch to make contact. Now, we should remind folks that Alex Lang was a starter in the Chicago Cubs organization when Detroit traded for him. They traded Nick Castellanos to Chicago and immediately told Alex Lang, our vision for you is out of the bullpen. He embraced it and he has thrived. Wouldn't want to see him either way. You don't want to see him. Wouldn't want to see him for five, six innings either. But boy, has he been efficient. Very effective out of that bullpen. Miller finds a hole on the left side for a two out single. His second hit of the day. Now it'll be Lang against Richie Palacios. Good stop by Barnhart, one and oh. A walk and a fly out to center for Palacios. Poured it in at 97. It's one and one. Skipped in there and another good pick by Barnhart, two and one. Barnhart's done an excellent job of that, keeping that ball in front. Eric Haas and Barnhart actually mm -hmm. have been really good behind the plate, blocking balls, keeping that ball in front. Haas doing some glove work on his own. He's got the pliers, the needle, no pliers. Palacios rips it foul. Baseball players are, are like that a lot. I mean, they, they're constantly working on gloves and bats, taping their own bats. Some people may think it comes as, as one big grip, but it doesn't. You know, hockey players always get a lot of credit for working on their sticks. Baseball players do it with their bats and their gloves. They're kind of the jack of all trades in that regard. See what Lang decides to do here. He's got an overpowering fastball. That gets up to 97. That change up. See if he opts to go to that curveball, though, which is a plus pitch for him and a put away pitch. There goes the runner. Swung on and missed. He went with the curveball and it worked. A couple of strikeouts for Alex Lang in the sixth, and the Tigers hold on to the three run lead. They lead it 5 2 over Cleveland. They have won each of the first three games and are looking for their first four game sweep of Cleveland since August of 2013. Yeah, you like how the Tigers just kept pouring it on. Willie Castro, Cody Clemens, Spencer Torkelson for the Tigers here in the sixth. How about this glove work, Shep? A lot of people bringing their gloves to the ballpark today. That's why you do it. 
We've seen some kids make some nice plays in the stands. That's a gross Falcon right there. At least he's wearing the T-shirt anyway. One. That's a foul ball. It's 0-2 to Willie Castro. Got some diehard Tiger fans coming out for this matinee early game. Pretty good crowd, huh? Yeah, I think so. Been really impressed with. It. I I was really impressed with the Fourth of July crowd. Yeah, twenty thousand in game one, over twenty four grand in game two. Tigers giving them a lot to cheer about. Swinging the bats a lot better. Yeah, you just hope it can continue. After this, Detroit heads to Chicago, Kansas City, and Cleveland before the All Star break. Michael Fulmer warming for Detroit in the bullpen. I like this stretch here, Chef. I like this stretch because they're playing divisional foes. Yeah. These are the teams that you have to beat. And the fact that they've gotten off to a really good start. Castro sends one to left. Palacios drifting back. He's got it. One away. We look ahead to the matchup with the White Sox brought to you by Wallside Windows. This is where Chicago is right now. Six and a half back in the division. Three games under 500. They like to steal bases. They're not very good defensively. But Jose Abreu offensively is very good. And you would say they're underachieving this year because I think coming into the season right everybody. A lot of the pundits around the game expected or picked. The White Sox to win this division. Yeah for sure. Yeah absolutely. Twins have been a big surprise. Huge surprise. Yep. I think this Cleveland team. Even though they're only a game above 500, is a surprise. Cleveland comes into play today, folks, just two and a half back of the wild card. Chicago is four and a half back. Well, in their roster turnover, they're the youngest team in the majors. Cleveland. Cleveland, right. yes, and they're yeah. still playing good baseball. There's the divisional standings. Inside to Cody Clemens, two and one. RBI single, a stolen base, and a run scored for Clemens in the second. And bounce back to Shane Bieber his last time on. Good take, it's three and one. Fouled away. You want to have a good conversation with Cody Clemens? Start talking hunting. <laughs> yeah. Because he goes back to Texas and he hunts it all. He's done it since he was a little kid with his brothers and his dad. A family bonding moment. Baseball, hunting, and holidays for him. Do you hunt? You ever been hunting? Oh yeah. I've never been hunting. I'm surprised you being a Texan. He draws a walk. No, I've just never really been a big fan. Hmm. Okay. I love going. I love fishing. Well, there, there you go. Fishing That's good too. Yeah. But never hunt. Always. I think I'm going to try it though, Shep. I think I'm going to try getting out there. It's very peaceful. It's very relaxing. The thing I like about fishing over hunting is fishing. You're out there talking. You know, you and I can cast a line and talk. We're not scaring the fish necessarily. But it's tough for you and I to do that in a tree stand when you're waiting for deer to romp through. Here's Spencer Torkelson. Swung on and missed. That's the cutter. He's gotten a heavy dose of those from Shane Bieber today. Yeah, Torkelson's been very aggressive. And is it bats against Bieber? And Bieber really has taken advantage of him by throwing him that cutter, starting it over the middle of the plate and allowing the, the movement to run out of the strike zone. Tork continues to swing and miss. Bieber will keep a close eye on Cody Clemens because, as we mentioned, stole a base back in the second, his first at the major league level. Wait. Sliders in for a strike. It's 0 2. Well, young hitters will get an education against Shane Bieber, <laughs> they won't they? Do. Yes, they do. 
Well, he just knows how to navigate and at bat. Will speed you up. Two seamer inside. Change your eye level with a curveball. Bieber did something last year that no pitcher in Major League history had ever done. Struck out 10 or more in each of his first four starts to a season. I'll probably throw Torgerson another one of those sliders or cutters away. Mm -hmm. Given the fact he hasn't been able to stay close. When Clemens has got his attention though, doesn't he? Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Hopefully he makes a mistake here. A lot of times when the pitcher's so concerned about the run at first base, he'll make a mistake to the hitter in the batter's box. Struck him out. That was the slider. And there are two away. Now a message from Mattress Firm. Mattress Firm's Season of Dreams sweepstakes could take you to the MLB at Field of Dreams game. Go to MLB.com slash Season of Dreams to view official rules and to enter today. Brings up the number nine hitter, Tucker Barnhart. Been on base twice and scored a run. He's also driven in a run. Yeah, Barnhart seeing the ball well today off Bieber. And he's taking some really good swings. First pitch is outside. The slider at 86 makes it 1 0. Tigers with two in the second, thanks to RBI singles from Clemens and Barnhart. And three in the fifth, thanks to an RBI single from Javier Baez and a two run single from Miguel Cabrera. Warner's got himself in a good 2-0 count here. He doesn't really look to pull in these situations. He really likes that ball down and away from him. See if he zero in on that zone. Worked at 3-0. The question here is, does he have the green light? Or if he's or is he taken? Have found the corner. Three and one. Walked him for the second time today. Yeah, you could just tell that with Barnhart. He was looking for a pitch in his zone, in his area. 93 pitches deep for Shane Bieber. Terry Francona. Looks like he wants to make a move. Two walks in the inning. He's already allowed five runs on seven hits. Francona will take the ball from him and go to his bullpen. In the sixth, and the Tigers leading by three. Classe in the series, and that's always a good thing. But they will see Eli Morgan in a wall side windows pitching change here in the sixth. Eli's been very effective this season. Been pretty dominant. You look at the innings that he's pitched 37, he's got 47 strikeouts, only a few walks. Yeah, the walks, hits per innings pitch, the whip 0.68, eye popping. Really like how the Tigers though got after Bieber today. Green fouls it away. That's the you know is it Shane Bieber's third start against Detroit this year. It's the second time they've really made him work for what he's had to earn. Yeah they just didn't expand the zone that much against him today. They really got some pitches over the plate and maybe Bieber made a few mistakes. 
And the Tigers in a position to make him pay. Got some traffic on the base pass because he was a little erratic today. They took advantage of it. One and two to Riley Green, who's one for three. Single back in the first. Had two strikes on him. He went to left field off Shane Bieber. His first ever at bat against one of the best in the business. He singled to left. And he's grounded to first and struck out. Fouls it away. Green's one of those guys that everybody will tell you, ah, pump the brakes. He's only 17 games deep in his major league career, but sometimes you look at a guy and you just think, I see it. And I'm sure a lot of these young fans do. Those young men will grow up rooting for this guy for a long time. Chip, you're absolutely right, though. You can see it. You see it on defense. You see it on in the clubhouse. It's just the way he carries himself. He's got this inner confidence. Believes it. Trusts it. All the things you want to do as a major league player. Yeah, with Riley Green, you don't want to pump the brakes. You want to speed up. <laughs> you just want to weave your way in and out of traffic. It's fun to watch. Checked his swing, didn't go. And listen, you know this too. You know he's going to go through a, a period where teams are going to make adjustments. You know, they're going to start pitching him tougher. They're going to pitch him different. But when you look at the mechanics and you look at his approach in the batter's box, He's got the approach to where he's going to get himself out of any slump, I believe, fairly quickly. Not many guys, again, we talk about being able to cover the entire plate. He seems to be able to do that. And he's shown that very early in his career. Good take. It's three and two. I do find that word interesting just because everyone says, well, teams are going to adjust. To it. Well, on the other hand, they, they constantly talk about the analytics. And the video work that they can get on you so quickly to get a read on you. So which is it? I give him credit for doing what he's done so far. On base in 16 of his first 17 major league games. Here's the 3 2. To center field, and it's grabbed by Ahmed Rosario. Just didn't get all of it. And Detroit strands a couple. Michael Fulmer is ready for his Wednesday afternoon of work. He gets the seventh when we come back. Fulmer's on in a wall side windows pitching change. This is his 31st appearance. And he has been rock solid. He truly has been. Been doing it a lot of different ways. He can overpower you with his fastball. He beats you with location. And then he also beats you with movement. He's got a really good slider slash cutter mix. Last pitched on Monday in game one of that double header in the Tigers 4 1 win. He threw two thirds of scoreless ball. Really utilizes all four quadrants of the strike zone, especially with even with his two seam at the top of the zone. You'll see him use that slider at the top of the zone as well. He's got two different ones. One has more depth. And one more has horizontal move. And the other one has horizontal move. But he loses Ernie Clement to start the seventh. So a leadoff walk for Clement. He's aboard for the second time today. And here's Sandy Leone. Leon singled in the fifth. It's just his second hit as a member of the Cleveland organization. A first pitch strike from Fulmer. That's the slider that Simo was referring to at 88 0 1. 
And you notice the location there. It's at the top of the strike zone. And as a hitter, we're looking for that slider. We see spin. We're thinking it's got some depth on it. It's going to dip. It's going to drop. And former ball stays true. There's another one. It really has been a game changer for him. It has been. With two strikes, so he likes to start that ball on the inner third and run it right in under the hands of the left handed hitters. See if he does that right here. He got him swinging. There's that slider there that we've been talking about for Michael Former. We talk about the location of it. And he keeps that ball down. And again, on the end of third, that's a pitch that he's had a lot of success with. And when he located it down and into the left handers, they've had a difficult time barreling that ball up. Now he faces the speedy Miles Straw. Javier Baez on alert since Straw has grounded to him twice. First pitch strike. Wouldn't be surprised here if Fulmer tries to crowd Straw with two seat fastballs inside and maybe even front door that cutter. Straw likes the ball out over the plate. That slider is something to behold right there. He's throwing it time and time again, and Cleveland just can't find it. 0 oh 2 to Straw. Outside, one and two. James Kanchik warming up for Cleveland. In the air, right center. Willie Castro came in, then goes back to away. It's a tough sky for outfielders. And Willie Castro, there's been a couple of times where he's gone back instead of coming in, gone coming in and instead of going back. And some of that might have to do with the conditions today. Well, it, it has a little bit to do with it. But again, this is a position that he continues to develop and get better at. And he's done a great job of it. I feel like today, though, he's shown off from the athleticism, the ability to bounce back, to make the adjustment after you maybe have made a wrong step. Maybe came in a little bit too much. He's shown that he's able to get back and still glove it and make a play. At the end of the day, Shep, it's about getting the out. And he's done that. Fulmer facing Stephen Kwan. He's been on base twice, drove in a run in the fifth with an RBI double. Slider in for a strike one and one. Six hits for Cleveland. Couple of extra base hits. The Fran Mill Reyes homer in the second. And the Stephen Kwan RBI double in the fifth. Tigers have seven hits. All of them singles. Swung on and missed. Again the slider. Dancing its way through the zone without any contact. One and two. Oh. 
up high two and two. On a line to right and a base hit for Stephen Kwan. Here comes Ahmed Rosario. The tying run at the plate and that forces a conversation with Chris Fetter, the pitching coach for Detroit. Yeah, I think this is a good visit here by Fetter, given the fact that Fomich's throwing a lot of sliders. He is located at well, but you still want to give show the hitter something different. You want to show him a two-seam fastball, but maybe elevate some fastballs just to change their eye level. You start throwing a lot of the same pitch, guys start to get even more comfortable. Start recognizing spin, how much movement's on that pitch, and they're able to make an adjustment. And we Andrew Chafin warming up Simo. That was the opposite recipe the other day in game one on Monday. It was Chafin, then Fulmer. Today it's Fulmer, and then it appears it'll be Chafin in the eighth. Some of that has to do with the matchups, right? How A.J. Hinch views Fulmer's stuff against certain Cleveland hitters. You were just talking about he's throwing a lot of sliders. He starts Rosario off with a slider in for strike one. I mean, but if he's going to locate it and keep it out of the middle of the plate, and it's a, it's a definitely an effective pitch for him, then you understand the usage. It's a pretty good example of his two different sliders on those first two pitches. First one a little up in the zone in for a strike. The other one low and away. Out of the zone, couldn't get him reaching. It's one and one. Swung on and missed another slider. That one better than the last one. One and two. It's almost as if Fulmer could broadcast what pitch he's about to throw, and there's nothing you can do about it. Fouled away. Rosario has popped up to second, bounced into a double play, and struck out. Well, former staying away from him. Rosario really likes that ball on the inside, hitting well over 300 in that middle end area. So you understand why former's trying to get him out, down and away. Little tapper, foul ball. Barnhart pounced on that oh, ball, man. didn't he? Yeah. He was trying to get it before, get it while it was in fair territory. And you can see here, just foul. The trip gifts and home plate umpires all over it. All Rosario has seen so far. Fulmer's best pitch. In the air, center field. Inning over, Michael Fulmer strands two. Tigers lead at 5 2 as we stretch at Comerica Park, brought to you by MGM Grand Detroit. Tigers leading the Guardians right now, 5 2. James Karinchek is in. For Cleveland, second time he's made an appearance in the series. He gets the seventh, Simo. Well, Karen Chase got a good fastball. 
firm fastball too. 96 97 gets up to 99 likes to cut that fastball though and he's got a real good breaking ball and with Baez leading off I'm sure that's what Terry Francona was thinking he's going to throw you a lot of breaking balls and see if you can't get Baez to continue to chase that pitch out of the zone one for three for Javier Baez drove in a run in the fifth with an RBI single to right and that's the difference I mean Miguel Cabrera later hit a two run single but it was Baez that gave the Tigers the lead yeah Baez got a good fastball right over the middle didn't try to pull it whistle right. that ball to right field behind in the count one and two. Seven home runs for Baez so far this season that is tied for the team lead with Eric Haas. Haas has been locked in. Here of late earning more playing time you can tell he's got better rhythm good time. Well the catcher spot has been very productive for Detroit in the series right whether it's Haas yeah. or Barnhart today who's got an RBI single a couple of walks and a run score right. Putting together good at bats, sitting on pitches, not missing them. Guys making adjustment pitch to pitch. That's up high. It's three and two to Javier Baez. Up high, Baez leads off the seventh with a walk. Now a message from Car Shield. What are you guys doing in my car? You need to call Car Shield now. They offer protection for most makes and models. <laughs> that sounds pretty great. That's because it is great, Nathan. <laughs> Here's Robbie Grossman. I like that commercial. <laughs> because it is great. <laughs> You like you like a Kilba do or Riley Green's? I, I like both of them. I do. I find myself Come chuckling on. inside. No, I love it. I'm pulling for that young man too down in Toledo now. He's starting to feel better. But I get a kick out of that look. It's because it is great, Nathan. <laughs> Come on, have some fun up here did, with me, did, Chef. Did you did you uh, star in any commercials while you were here or anywhere? No. No. Okay. <laughs> Oh man. You may now. I don't know. Grossman drives one right center field. That ball is up against the wall. Baez will dig for home. He'll make it easily. Grossman on his way to third, and he is there with a pop-up slide and RBI triple for Robbie Grossman. Gives the Tigers a four-run lead. And as we continue to talk about Robbie Grossman making some adjustments, changing his sights. Spinning on that pitch at the top part of the strike zone and hunting pitches at the bottom. But he gets one right over the heart of the plate and he does miss it. Look how he keeps the hands up though and he works down and through this baseball. This is a swing that he continues to fight to get to and be more consistent with. So it's nice to see Robbie Grossman hit the bat head out in front and driving another big run for the Tigers. And look at Baez. He knows right away that ball's going to get down. Picking him up, putting him down. Cabrera fouls it back. Yeah, Baez, we've talked about it before in our broadcast. He is an underrated base runner. Just cutting the bases. Yeah. Not taking wide turns, hitting the inside part of the bag. Got that little lean with him. Two RBIs already for Miguel Cabrera today. Slams one to center field. Straw is there. That's a sacrifice fly. Three RBIs for Miguel Cabrera. The lead is 7-2 now for Detroit. Again, we talked about this earlier, guys, how Miguel Cabrera is such an intelligent hitter. How he hits to situations. Runner at third base, less than two outs. He does exactly what you want to do. Get a ball up and just drive it out to the outfield. And he drives in another run for the Tigers. 
Chip, he's been getting full here lately, eating a lot of steak. He's been getting <laughs> rib highs. He's driving them in. Salt, pepper, A1 <laughs> sauce. Here you are, sir. Here's Jonathan Scope. Tigers averaging almost seven runs per game in this series. That's impressive, man. Yeah, it really is. But it just looks like they're not chasing results right now. They're at best. They are they're chasing the approach. They're making sure that they have the right approach and they're utilizing the right. They have the right plan in the batter's box as well. And they're getting the result. Constantly learning. That's Scott Coolball, the hitting coach with Robbie Grossman. Scope sends one in the air to left field. Palacios is there. Two away. Castro 0 for 3, a strikeout and a couple of flyouts to left. Curveball's in for a strike 0 and 1. And Jim, I think you would agree, this has been the Tigers' best brand of baseball, like this stretch. Like, I know it's 4 3 games, this is the fourth game, but it just seems like this has been the, the style of baseball that they want to play for the rest of the season. Well, I would argue all season. Yeah. You know? Line drive at Ernie Clement. Inning is over, but the Tigers add to their lead. It started with a quality walk by Javier Baez, followed by a triple from Robbie Grossman, and a sacrifice fly from Miguel Cabrera. 7 2 Detroit as we head to the inning. It's a wall side windows pitching change. Yeah, Chapin has been good coming out of that bullpen as well. You see the 30 strikeouts there, and he does it in a couple different ways. He's got a heavy sinker, two seam fastball, works down in the strike zone. Runs away from the right-handers. And he's got a changeup that he uses occasionally. But he puts right-handers and left-hand hitters away with that slider. He takes over after Michael Fulmer's solid seventh inning. And faces Jose Ramirez. Where was that pitch? Where was where was that pitch? Yeah, I just happened to look up and <laughs> see the replay. You're asking the wrong guy here, buddy. <laughs> How about this pitch here? Look at the location, Chef. Down in the zone. That's in the zone. 93 miles per hour. Catching that bottom quadrant of the strike zone. Didn't get the call, though. Now two and one. We mentioned Chafin pitching in game one of this series against Cleveland through an inning and a third of scoreless ball. Strike two called and it's two and two. All right, Chef, I believe he's got him set up here. He's got two good fastballs on the outer half. Got him looking out there. Now let's see if he doesn't go to that slider on the back foot of Ramirez. Ground ball to third. Clements bobbled it for a moment and then air mills it over the head of Torkelson. Rush the throw. Ramirez heads to second. Yeah, I think that bobble. And Clements mind is in his head just thinking, man, I got to speed up. He sped up a little bit. And again, he overthrows Torkelson at first base. Maybe put a little bit too much on it, tried to grab back and get some extra. And you see, the air melted a little bit. Opens the door for Fran Mil Reyes. Ironically, on Monday in game one, the last time Chafin pitched against Cleveland, he faced Ramirez, Reyes, and Miller. He'll do the same here in the eighth. Strike one to Reyes.
That's a foul ball down the third baseline. The big fly from Reyes in the second went the opposite way. Traveled 381 feet and was the 11th of his career against Detroit. Yeah, coming into this series, he was scuffling. He really was, had no idea of the strike zone. He was chasing pitches up in the strike zone. Pitches down in the strike zone. Still feel chase here. Reyes did miss 23 games with a hamstring injury. He's also kind of got into pool mode. So he wasn't able to cover that pitch on the outside part of the plate. Popped it up. This will help. Baez drifting under it. One away. Here comes Owen Miller. Miller's had himself a day, a couple base knocks. He's put together some good swings. Yeah, he and Steven Kwan are the only guardians today with multi-hit games. Kwan a double and a single. Miller a couple of singles. Well, he's just one of those guys that are tough to strike out. He, you know he's not going to take a big swing. He's just trying to pepper that ball through the hole. He's done it well today. Pull side into the opposite field side. Mm -hmm. And take strike mm -hmm. one. Foul tipped into the glove of Barnhart 0 2. Fouled away. Way out in front. That's that slider there uh, that Chafin likes to go to when he gets hit us to two strikes. He's been winning the race though to two strikes. And Miller's just able to get a piece of this ball, but I like the location there, trying to get that ball down and in. Let's see if he goes back to it. He's starting a little bit more on that inner third. And allow that movement to break down at that back foot. But Miller, see if he can't swing over the top of it. Another pop up. Torkelson calls off Chafin. Really good <laughs> communication there. A lot of spin there on that Torkelson. one. Torkelson, <laughs> yeah. You, you, laugh, you laugh only because it's it's Chafin who called it right away, <laughs> and then how he darts out of the way for Torkelson to take control. Yeah, Torkelson wasted no time. <laughs> Get out of the way, Chafe. I'm coming. I've got it. I've got it. We were joking about that yesterday with Cleveland Indians, where the pitcher just stayed in the way and didn't make the play. And we joked about him, the pitchers not being that athletic. Our partner, Dan, Dan Petrie. <laughs> Said he was taught to get out of the way too. Here's a pitch hitter in Oscar Mercado. I love what he said. The look that Big Wheel, the catcher Lance Parrish, would give him if looks could kill you. He said. <laughs> Thought that was funny. One sure. big bear hug, huh? Yeah. Simo was referring to Connor Pilkington, who committed that error in the ball game on Monday in Game Two. 
kind of opened things up for the Tigers. They went on to win it 5 3. Swung on and missed. It's one and one. Tigers defense is playing Oscar Mercado to pull. So the shift is on to the left side of the infield. Strike two called. It's one and two. Fouled away. Chapin's thrown a lot of fastballs today against the Guardian. He normally goes to that slider. But he's got a real good feel for that two seam fastball that he's featured. Got a little giddy up on it there. 93 miles per hour. You see the pitch you should stare. That two seamer, fifty percent. Able to hold up, and it's two and two. The Tigers will have Cody Clemens, Spencer Torkelson, and Tucker Barnhart do up in the eighth. Emmanuel Class A is warming for Cleveland. He needs some work because they haven't put him in his usual spot closing games. They haven't had the chance to do it yet in the series. And that's been a good thing, Tiger. He's, he's been filthy all season. shelby has got 20 in his way. He hasn't given up a run. Down the right field line, foul. And his numbers against Detroit, should he come into the ball game, we'll show you, are pretty impressive as well. I was joking with DeMarlo Hell, their bench coach. He said, I said, what about the back end? He goes, oh, if we get to Class A, it's over. He's been that good. Sliding stop by Barnhart, a good at bat by Oscar Mercado. It's three and two. Really don't want to give the, it, the, the Guardians any breathing room here by giving them away free passes. So if you're chafing, you want to put Mercado away here. Mm -hmm. How does he do it? To with the two seamer, 93 down and away. Or do, to, or do we go to that bread and butter? And that's that slider. Uh, Popped up. Barnhart's under it. He's got it. And Andrew Chafin uses 21 pitches and works around a leadoff air. Tigers lead it by five every part of Comerica Park. Yeah, I just love, absolutely love this spray chart here. Love the laser show that the Tigers have displayed this series against the Guardians. I think they all have recognized and realized that it's not about hitting homers. It's yeah. about keeping the line moving. Singles work, singles play here at the major league level. They drive in runs. We've seen that with Miguel Cabrera. Trusting the guy behind you. Put a good swing on it. Move the ball forward and good things happen. This will be a challenging offensive inning for Detroit in the eighth against Emmanuel Class A. Look at that, 130 pitches thrown at 100 miles an hour or more. Second most in baseball. Yeah, he's almost been unhittable. He faces Cody Clemens to start the eighth. Oscar Mercado stays in the ball game and plays left field. Shepard, when a guy has like Class A has a fastball that he throws consistently, triple digits, 
that's all you have. That's all you can sit on. If he throws you anything else, you just got to tip your cap to him. Do you want to time that fastball and see if you can't get to it? Well, there's the cutter at 99. Back to back cutters to Cody Clemens 0 2. Clemens with an RBI single, a stolen base, and a run scored in the second. He has also walked today and grounded out. In the air, right field. Quan going back, looking up. It is gone! Cody Clemens muscles up with two strikes, and he takes a flamethrower out of the ballpark. Oh, baby. He got something on the inside part of the plate, pulls the hands inside, gets to it. Goes big fly, and he greets Class A to right field. How about that? Take a look at the location here. Cody Clement gets himself started early. A little 93 mile per hour looks like, like a little slider there. And Cody catches him out front with a little backspin. And that ball carries out. That is the first career homer allowed by Class A to a Tiger. Matter of fact, in his career, he had allowed only one earned run. Don't tell that to Cody Clemens. <laughs> Sharply to third on backing up was Ramirez. And he gets Torkelson by a step and a half. My partner Craig Monroe likes to talk about how guys carry themselves. Cody Clemens carries himself like a major leaguer, even though he hasn't been up here long. He really does. Just get the chance to hang out with him, talk to him, spend a lot of time with him on the bus rides, on the, on the road trips, and here in the clubhouse at home. And it's just a joy to talk to. He's a base, like you said, Chef, he's a baseball guy. He loves the game, loves being around the guys. Works his tail off. Prepares extremely well. And that can be a challenge for a young player, rookie player. And, and given the fact that he plays multiple positions, the work that he has to put in and has to prepare as if he's playing every single day. And is new to the most of those he's, he's new to him. He yes. was drafted as a second baseman out of the University of Texas. Played a little third base at Texas as well. Actually went to Texas as a third baseman. But the thing about it with Cody Clemens is he embraced it. Okay, you want, you think I can get to the majors faster by learning how to play first base and left field? Give me the gloves, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, and he's he done it. Yeah, he's definitely accepted that challenge. And he's excelled. He fits in. 0-2 oh, to Barnhart. As Swung you on say, he's a dude. <laughs> he is a dude. He's a dude. Yeah. Two away to the top of the order for another dude. <laughs> Riley Green. Will Vest, who as Trevor Thompson told the story earlier, just got back to Detroit and is ready for the night. Chops it foul. On the outside rail, it's 0-2 to Riley Green. 
Yeah, been that's in this just spot. not right. Yeah, he's been in this spot quite a bit here tonight. <laughs> yeah. See the movement on that 101 fastball? Started right over the middle of the plate. Darts away, catches the corner. The outside corner. The 0 2 broken bat foul. We're talking about Raleigh Green and trusting himself with two strikes, not afraid to hit with two strikes. There's a 100 mile per hour fastball in the inner half and fighting to get the barrel to it. It's not able to get it quite there. But again, I like the trust in this young man's approach. On the corner to get him looking. But the Tigers add to their lead. It's now 8 2 thanks to Cody Clemens's. Lead off home run. 0 oh, 2, it doesn't matter. Hook of horns. Detroit's up six. Should they hold on with Will Vest on the bump in the ninth? Would be a four game sweep of Cleveland. The first pitch from Vest to Ernie Clement is in for a strike 0 oh, 1. It is a wall side windows pitching change. It's good to see him back in the clubhouse and on the mound for the 27th time this year. Yeah, Chef, this is where he deserves to be. Uh, he's pitched well. You know what you're going to get from Will Vest. He's got a good fastball, guys. 96, 97. He's got a really good slider. He will throw a changeup, but he's more curveball, slider, fastball. Likes to elevate that fastball. And off that fastball, he'll throw you that wicked breaking ball that works the bottom of the zone. He's getting the seven, eight, and nine hitters here in this ninth inning. Look at how good this bullpen has been for Detroit. <laughs> so steady. Up high. Two and two. I mean, we said it earlier, Chef. When that gate opens out there, you feel good about the guy that's trotting in to take them out. There's a lot of trust in those guys out there. And a lot of choices. Yes. Clement fouls it away. I like the continuity of those guys, man. They're pulling for each other. They're battling with each other every single day. When the Tigers needed another starter, Drew Hutchison, they had to make a move. And that meant Will Vest had to go down to Toledo. A.J. Hinch admitted it wasn't fair, it wasn't right. He didn't want to do it, but it had to be done. Tigers pulled him off the plane when he landed in Omaha the other day. He stayed the night at a Best Western Hotel and now is back here in Detroit. Riley Green makes up a lot of ground, folks. One away. He ran a ways to get it and made it look easy, didn't he? He did. He did have a long way to go. He looked like he was playing a little bit in right center field. Again, getting a good jump and just getting over there and making a play, making it look easy. I love how you described him the other day. It's, he's not a burner. Okay, no. he's not Willie Wilson from the 80s in Kansas City. All right, but he takes the right route and he gets great jumps, and that's what he's more proud of than anything else defensively. Yeah, and he should be. Uh, and I know the work that it takes to get to that level, and it just tells me that this young man has put in the work during batting practice, working on the getting those good jumps and taking the right routes. And he is constantly moving in center field. He's a not one of, of those player. stationary guys, right? Talking to him about that the other day, I said, what's the pre-pitch setup? He said it's one, two, hop. And when he hops, he hopes the batter's making contact. That's how he gets himself in rhythm, and that's what allows him to get so many good jumps. Yeah, that's textbook. He'll be tested here on a line drive, and he's right there to away.
This is Miles Straw. First pitch strike from Will Best. Half-hearted swing to make it a one-two. Up the middle on the backhand scope. Tough play won't get it. Infield single for Miles Straw. I like the effort though there by, by Scope. You know, we, we've talked at length about his strong arm from the second base position. It was asking a lot to get him to, to ask him to throw out Miles Straw, who gets down the line faster than most big leaguers. But he made it look close, Shep. He's smiling. He knows he couldn't make that play, but you like the effort there, right? For sure. Here's Stephen Kwan. And another first pitch strike from Best. A couple of hits for Stephen Kwan today. Fouled away. Cleveland again down to their final strike. Your Will Vesh is thinking, what do I throw here? So sped him up with some good fastballs, 95, 96. Let's see if I can't throw with these wicked breaking balls. In the dirt here, see if he won't chase it. Way outside. Ground ball to second. That's the first four game sweep of Cleveland since August of 2013 and the Tigers third sweep of this season. Let's send it to Mickey York at the Valley Sports Desk for Tigers live post game. Mick. All right, Chef, thank you very much. Coming up on the show, we'll look at how the Tigers fought fire with more fire today and why their ability to answer was 